Hello! Welcome back to another video. Okay. <clears throat> Hello! It's a real Thursday video. Um, today I'm going to be talking about something that I've been meaning to do a video on for a long time, and it's the Alistair method. Um, I'm actually going to sort of show you in this whole mole scheme. Um, this method uh, was designed by a guy named Alistair Johnson. Um, and so that's why, hence the name, and basically as a way to do a future log um, without having to worry about space. And so I'm going to show you how that's uh, set up as like the basic, here's how it works, and then I will show you how I actually use it um, in my day-to-day -day planning. So first of all, the idea of the future log, like originally what you would do in like the, the video that, um, that writer Carol put, uh, put up that shows you how to you know, just the basic bullet journal system. You would make your future log look something like this. You would probably want to count the dots um, and do this evenly, but you know, it's actually pretty close. And then you'll um, put your months up here. And then every time you have something that comes up in the future, you put it under. The month that you've got right and you can you know design it however you want basically but this is how it's done in um, writer's video that you basically just have a space um, for each month and so if something comes up that's for April you write it here um, and that's great but what if you have a whole bunch of stuff or not a lot of stuff you end up with uneven months say that your May is super busy but your February nothing happens and you have this big long list here that maybe runs out of room you're you know scribbling stuff in the corners and then this one's completely empty if you're not even using January at all because you already have the monthly setup this is where Alistair Johnson came up with his idea so what he has same two-page spread. Actually, this two-page spread that uh, writer Carol came up with only fits six months. Right? But what you can do, very clever, is you press the top like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then over here, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How many months in a year, guys? All right. And then you go, all right, I have a dentist appointment at 4 p.m. And, uh, or you probably want to put this on like the 10th of February. And then you put a dot in that column. Okay, I have to change the oil in my car in May. Um, I have to, uh, what else, like, I've got a, a wedding, so, so-and-so's wedding on the 15th of April. There you go. And so the benefit of this is that you don't have to assign a certain amount of space beforehand. Whenever something comes up, you just put it on the next line, and then you put a dot in the column of the appropriate thing, right? Um, it and then when February comes along, you go into the column and you just scan down. You go, okay, I've got this, I've got this thing, I've got this thing, and you can fit it all on here, right? So in the traditional Alistair future log, that's what you've got: um, six months on one side, six months on the other. You can kind of develop it however you prefer, of course. And there's so many different options and ways to use this basic system. Um, I'm sure he's not the first person to think of categorized columns, but it's um, it's a way that the bullet journal community has kind of jumped onto. And so this is what I use this sort of idea for. Um, I've shown, basically I've shown all these spreads before, but so first of all, uh, let's see, first I'm going to show you this. This is my weekly for this week. Um, I went with this one page spread a weekly spread from Peanuts Planner Co. on this side, and then on this side I have what was called a weekly tracker from Peanuts Planner Co., which I'm using. You'll notice it's got columns, one column per day. And so I write out all of the different things that I have to do during the week, and then I put a dot on the day of the day I'd like to try to get it done. 
So, you know, I'm migrating things over and over because you can still do that. But basically, I can sort of assign a task to a day without having to, like, wait for that daily to come up. I can sort of put a bookmark on something and say, okay, I'm not going to worry about this thing. It's off my mental, you know, front burner for today because it's got a dot. Like, I don't have to worry about this task because I'm going to do it on the weekend. And there it is. Um, but it's I still want it there so I don't forget to do it this week. And then also I can kind of move things around and say, all right, I'm going to put five dots in today's column and five in tomorrow's or something like that. So I, um, I use this when I have a lot of stuff to do, and I find that it really helps me to get a grip on my week um, and helps me to uh, get a strike a nice balance between like front loading a week where you're like, let's get it all done on Monday or procrastination where I'm like, okay, it's just a weekly to-do list. Like these weekly to-do lists, I have this too and like I'm, I keep ignoring the things on here because it's like, oh, I still have so much of the week left, but it's already Thursday and, you know, I have one of these things crossed off. I'm working on the other one right now. So this is a great way to use the Alistair method for your weekly planning. Um, I, I just call them Alistair weeks. A lot of people will call them running tasks lists, running task lists, and I don't know why exactly, but if you hear people talk about that, take a look, they might be doing the same kind of a system. I've been doing this since the very first month that I was in that um, Moleskine journal. Um, actually, i show you that. I started this journal in July with a normal future log. I started this journal in July of 2016. The first couple weeks had sort of a normal layout and then my goodness, it was a very different style back then. I did a full flip through of this um, last June. Uh, yeah, I want to say June. So here we go. I did this sort of, there you go, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all of that. And I, um, I also found that it was helpful to put a line after the thing if I did it or moved it. In this case, it's like I migrated most of the stuff. Oh, you know what? That was because back then when I migrated, I would put it on the daily and then I would mark it migrated. Um, but then it was kind of hard to tell if it had been done yet. I am not finding that to be the case as much with the checkboxes on the right side. So play around with that and see what helps you, you know, visualize things better. The other way that I use this concept is with my, uh, my next action items list. This insert is called categorized it's called Categorized List, something like that, um, from Peanuts Planner Co. And it comes in a three column and five column version. And I have I did a whole video on this spread, but um, basically I have different contexts in which I can do different things. And then I write down everything and then I put, I, like I color code or just sort of mark here with the, my mild liner, the column that it belongs in. So if I'm, you know, at home, I look at the home column if I'm, you know, out and about, I look at the errands column, that kind of a thing. So I find that's really helpful and basically allows me to not have to think about context because it's sort of like you can brain dump a to-do list this way without doing anything in a particular order. Just brain dump the whole thing, whatever order it comes to mind, and then categorize it as you go or assign it to a day of the week um, or to a month of the year or whatever you like to do. So that's what today's video was. I hope that you found it interesting. If you've been wondering what the Alistair method is or where it came from, um, I am going to link below the article that Alistair Johnson himself po uh, posted on the bulletjournal.com blog. Um, so you can find out a little bit about his backstory and how he came up with it and how he uses it. So check that out as well. Subscribe so you don't forget. Uh, so you don't miss our next videos, and I will see you in the next one on Sunday. Goodbye.